Welcome to Real Talk in ELT, the podcast that talks about the reality of teaching English. Um, so this episode, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk in ELT. But uh, this episode uh, is, I, I wanted to to give some suggestions for people about um, a couple things that have popped up in my mentoring sessions and I thought would be useful for other people. Um, so one of the things is um, learner profiles um, and learner portfolios. First, uh, having an accurate learner profile. I'm realizing that a lot of teachers are not spending the time to develop profiles or um, record keeping uh, with their with their students. So I'm thinking that this is something that might be that might go beyond just the people that I'm working with currently in, in mentoring and training, and that this might be a, a more systemic problem. <laughs> so um, if you're working privately, I would highly recommend that you develop your own system in, ter in terms of developing learner profiles and then also having good and accurate record keeping. Um, so, and this goes back to the needs analysis. So data that you collect throughout the prior to the course, throughout the course, and at the end of the course is actually going to be quite invaluable for you, um, both with that learner and with other future learners as well, because you can look back and, and reflect on the process and the course that you developed with one of your learners, and then um, see how useful uh, and applicable it would be with other people who are having similar issues. Um, so not only kind of the lesson to lesson, this is what we did, this is the pages we covered, or this is the, you know, content that we, that we worked with. Um, but also, you know, some uh, like, uh, not a lot, because I, I don't think that we need to spend hours and hours of on time on record keeping, but some commentary, some information, just so kind of, you kind of can, can refer back to it, because memories get <laughs> a little fuzzy, um, especially when you're working with lots of people. So um, record keeping, I think, is very important. Now, the other thing that is part of record keeping um, that I think people need to start implementing and has been helpful for me and I think has been helpful for the mentees that I've been discussing this with is a learner portfolio. Now, learner portfolios can look all sorts of ways. There's no right way and wrong way of doing a learner portfolio, but it is a important um, document uh, or, or file to have on the, the learner. And um, it can include lots of stuff. <laughs> any piece of work that they've produced or have completed or anything along those lines. It can be stored electronically or it can be an actual physical file if you're working face-to-face. -face. Um, uh, it can be kept in their notebook in a separate section, so uh, as long as they don't lose the notebook. Uh, and it, can, it, should be, it should be shared, uh, so the teacher and the student should have access to it. Um, so uh, I, I'll give you the example of what I do, um, and this is not by any means the correct way, um, but I keep everything on a Google platform, so the Google Classroom for me. And <clears throat> when students do tasks and uh, produce work, it's all uploaded there, which is in, into a shared drive that we have, um, but it's organized through the, the Google Classroom. And the reason that it's important is that students, especially private students, people who are working VIP, um, people who don't go through the standard test taking course type of thing where they have exams or unit tests or um, I work with a lot of business English people and adults and they don't really want or that, that type of formal assessment. So it's usually an informal formative assessment that is up to me to be able to assess their progress. But that means that it's quite difficult for them to see their progress because again, it's for mostly formative assessment, um, not really any formal summative assessment at the end of any necessary units, um, just because that <laughs> that's just the, the dynamic that I have with 95% of my students. Um, so, so what I do is uh, we have that, that shared electronic folder, drive, platform, whatever you want to call it. 
um, and everything is there. So it allows the students to see their progress. They can go back and reflect on it. Um, I usually typically, well, I typically use a variety of different things. So projects on a jam board, um, audios that they send me in WhatsApp that I then just kind of download and stick into their folder. Gosh, there's, you know, anything that they produce. Um, all the dogs are howling in the neighborhood. I wonder if you can hear it, but then I also wonder what's going on. <laughs> it is like mm, almost nine o'clock at night. Hmm. Maybe there's a a wicked cat running around just tempting all the dogs. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, back to the show. Um, so yeah, so having that uh, allows them to see their progress. And what it also allows you to do, especially if you're good at record keeping, um, what you can do is you can start seeing their progress. And in specific times, you can notice when they're being highly productive and when they're being not as productive. And this is where... Um, the, a little bit of reflective practice in your record keeping helps. So let me give you an example. I have a student profile and um, on a weekly basis, I update what content and materials we use. Um, and then I also put some reflections in there like um, busy at work, end of the month closing, um, children are sick, uh, uh, going on vacation next week is really excited, uh, got a promotion, you know, all those types of things that affect um, the, the student's performance in the classroom. And then, um, so I have this kind of week by week, you know, content of what they're doing and kind of where their mental state is, what's going on at the time. And then uh, I have their portfolio. So when I see that they're producing um, works, uh, written works or oral um, presentations or whatever they're producing is, is really high quality, then I'll compare it to the dates when that was created. I'll compare that to, well, what was I doing in class? And then um, to be a little bit of reflective about that, you can say, well, in this period of time, I was using more of a PPP standard framework of lessons um, and was assigning tasks for homework that were um, very repetitive in nature uh, for repetition, repetition purposes, and, um, and etc. So you can kind of analyze what was going on. And then uh, you can look at when students are being less productive um, or the quality of their work drops a little bit or they're making lots of mistakes. And then you can go back to your, your record keeping and say, well, um, we were doing some, I don't know, project-based learning or task-based learning or um, test, teach, 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 test, teach, test uh, style frameworks, or um, we were just having conversation classes at that time or you know, whatever, be reflective of what you were doing and also be reflective of what was going on. So uh, if there was difficulties at home, if they were having troubles with their kids getting sick or, you know, their boss was being super demanding for, for a period of time. And then be reflective of that. So, okay, well, let's let's try it again with that style of lesson or that methodology or that framework or whatever you were doing at the time to see if it was actually that or if it was their, their frame of mind. Um, and then you're, you're able to kind of suss out what is the best, I don't want to say methodology, but the best way to approach and develop lessons for this person and, um, and a way of also being aware that if certain behavioral things are happening or certain things are happening in their life, um, that the quality of their work might drop. So th this is really the benefit of good record keeping of what's going on with your students, what you're doing, and also what's going on in their lives. So you can kind of have a, a personal picture of them. It makes it a lot easier to do needs, needs analysis because if you have that, as well as their learner portfolio, those two things are quite invaluable to be able to see uh, what content has been, sorry, 
motorcycle, what content has been really absorbed and what content is actually not that great um, in terms of being able to use and reproduce uh, in an accurate way. Uh, so, so yeah, that's what I would recommend. Start doing a little bit better job at record keeping and using those records um, to contrast against, or to compare against, I should say, the learner portfolios, which is the, the work produced by the learners, and see how you can improve the way that you're delivering the lessons so that the students are actually getting maximum benefit. I think that's it. <laughs> a little preachy, you know, but um, maybe a, a, a good option for people to start thinking about what they're doing in terms of keeping their records, uh, reflecting on their teaching practice, continuous needs analysis with their clients, and then also um, looking at the, the actual production of the student and how it's... Uh, the quality of it is going up or down based on and reflected on upon when you're looking at your teaching practice and what you're doing in the classroom. So one way of taking a look at things, hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if you experiment with it. I would love to, to hear um, if it's benefiting you or if it's not. One other final note that I should say is that record keeping and all of this stuff should be, especially the learner portfolio, the learner portfolio should be the learner's responsibility. Uh, you, you can monitor it and obviously you need to give some feedback in terms of language feedback. And I mean, you need to be a teacher with that, but the, the building the learner portfolio should be the learner's responsibility. And then building and maintaining the learner profile um, with some content notes and, and personal notes, reflective notes, that's going to be your responsibility. And I can't really tell you what that's going to look like. Uh, mine looks a very specific way because that's how my brain works. <laughs> um, I have seen uh, a learner profile document from uh, a friend uh, that has his own private school and it's, it's fine, it works. Um, and I think it's very well done but it's not the way that I set mine up because his brain obviously works differently and organizes information differently than I do. Um, and from my previous experiences in schools, the learner profiles have been on this in, in a system. Um, and so sometimes you don't have a lot of control over that, but um, if you're working privately, then, then you can definitely set up a structure or a framework that works best for you um, in terms of, facility of using it and also efficiency of using it because again the idea is not to take hours and hours to maintain your records the records are supposed to be there to help you and make your life a little bit easier not stress you out so that's that those are my thoughts uh record keeping learner portfolios see how you can use them to your benefit um and, and kind of maximize your your students learning. All right, and that's it. Uh, my dog's over here making making a nest for herself so she can take a little nap. So I think I'm gonna <laughs> hop in with her and take a little snooze. All right, uh, that's it for me and I'll see you guys back at the next episode. Ready to join the conversation? Head on over to Instagram at Kelly Pennington ELT and send me a message. That's it for now. Take care of yourself, your health, your vibe, and your tribe. Until next time.